Hey, this is Brian from BrianWright732.com, and this is the Daily B whatever. And the issue I've got is uh, I've got really crappy lighting. Hey, it's Brian. So I forgot my normal camera at home, and I'm using my setup here on my computer. So you'll see my eyes are looking at the wrong thing. My lighting sucks. This is not my normal setup, so I apologize. But, you know, it's one of those coffee or the cup arguments. Does the quality of this video really matter or what I'm saying, whatever you decide, you'll let me know, I guess, in comments, views, all that kind of crap. So here's the thing. I'm going to talk about something because it was an issue that I ran into. So I employ people. I work with someone that uh, also employs people within the same company, but the difference is the mindset and how we employ people. And I think this is a theme that goes through any type of leadership. It's not just employing of people. So for me, when you hire somebody, the vote of confidence doesn't come after you hire them. It is the act of hiring that shows the confidence in somebody. So if you do your due diligence and you have a really good interview process and you really figure out who somebody is, you're going to make a decision based upon all of that info. Hopefully it's the right one. And then what's next? You don't come in and say you have to. What you do is you put someone in a position where they're going to be successful. Now, for them to be successful, they have to also get a personal sense of satisfaction. You know, follow me at all. You know I talk about this a lot because happy, satisfied people don't go anywhere. People that are not doing what they want to do are always looking for something else and they're going to leave you. And usually they leave you at a time that doesn't work for you. So if you want to control, I don't even know if that's the right word, but if you basically want to uh, minimize the liability of an employee, that was good. That was kind of professional sounding. So if you want to minimize the liability with employees, you want to put them in a position where they're going to be successful. That is your job as a leader. I think all people that hire people, all people that manage people, anyone that chooses to be a leader of any kind, it is not your job to sit there and hammer people for not doing things. It is your job to put people in a position where they are going to be most successful. That allows whatever venture you're working on to be more successful which means there will be more opportunity, more profits, more whatever for everyone. So when you hire somebody, don't sit back and be all this judgmental nonsense. Be critical and judgmental of yourself and how you are using people. Because when people fail, it's that you put them in the wrong position, you didn't train them, or you made a poor choice in hiring them. If you made the poor hiring choice, you're gonna need to let them go. If you don't train them, you probably will let them go and it's really your fault and you screwed up somebody's time, life and commitment because you just didn't want to do the work. If you don't put them in a position where they're going to be successful, you're just, again, creating a self-defeating situation, which is on you. As a leader, you are responsible for everything. You don't get to pick and choose. You can't be responsible for all the success and the employees be responsible for all the failure. If that's the way you operate, you're not going to be operating very long or you're not going to have a consistent, good, solid team that's creating positive growth for you. So if you really want to create a good team that is going to develop your business with you know, less stress, be there for the long term, you got to flip the script and you've got to understand that when you hire people, that you're putting a vote of confidence in them at the hiring point. You recognize something in them. Now you've got to take that recognition and then you have to put it into the place where it's going to be most successful. It's not your employee's job to figure out where they're successful. It's your job to figure out where they're successful. And then the next step is figuring out if that is a satisfying thing for that employee to do every day. Because again, if they're not satisfied, they're not going to work for you very long. And that's the thing. I, it's like, okay, like math. I'm actually really good at math, but I don't like it. So if I had to do math all day, I would be miserable. I can do it. I just don't want to. I just don't like to. I do it when I have to because that's part of running a business, but it's not the primary function that I put myself because I would just want to kill myself. So I would never do that to an employee. I don't want to put them in a position, no matter how successful they can be within that position, if they're not happy at the end of the day doing that, it's just not going to work. So you've got to understand as the employer, the control 
for the success is you. The employee, they're an employee looking to you for leadership. You're not a leader looking to them for the direction. That's your job as a leader. You're supposed to see the future and give people the right opportunity to be successful. That's what leadership, management, CEO, whatever you are, that's your job. So when uh, you're trying to figure out what to do for hiring and people and whatever, really look at where are they gonna be successful? What skill sets do they have? And then just get to know these people on a personal level enough to find out what their satisfaction is. So I've got some people that are really good at what they do, but they only want to work so many hours because they have families. You know, I have women that really want to be moms. I have guys that really want to coach the baseball team. There's nothing wrong with that. My business could use more of them. And then that's where I have to figure out by giving them the time they need to be personally satisfied with their life. Am I getting the results that I need to be able to afford them and it's not even just affording them but is the business growing from their time commitment and their behavior if this doesn't match well then we separate and that is what it is and then they go find a job that fits their needs better it's not my job to morph the needs of the company it's my job to recognize the right people that will fit into the needs of my company that's really the issue a lot of people will change their company to accommodate the staff which ends up killing the company or they tell the staff, you have to modify yourself for the needs of the company. And again, it fails. Failure comes when either side is not satisfied. So I need to see satisfaction in my business. I need my employees to be satisfied with their behavior in the business. When we're mutually satisfied, we're working towards a common goal. Everything is good. So I'm a little all over the place on this, but I think I got my point across. It is not about... You know, don't sell people a bag of goods about what your business is and then expect them to magically do anything because there's no such thing as magic. There's only work, there's only training, there's only like the mathematics of the business process and you're either engaged in that or you're not. So if you're gonna be a leader, actually lead. Tell, you know, take people, put them in the best position. And for me, this is me, I know some people as leaders that like to beat people up because they're just miserable pricks. But then for me, I actually like making people happy through the work. So I feel personally that we spend so much time at work. We probably spend more time at work than anywhere else in our life. So we might as well be satisfied, be happy, feel like we're doing something good, creating something better, whatever, but it should be a positive experience. So that when we leave work and we go home to our families and we go to our personal lives, we just have positive momentum so that we can get on a really good cycle so that we're happy to go to work. We're happy when we go home because of work and on and on and on. And it just snowballs into bigger, more positive situations. The people that kill people all day long and they're like, ah, they can be happy at home. That's bullshit. They're leaving work miserable. They're going home miserable and complaining about work. And then they're not happy to get up and go back to work again. And they're underperforming and eventually it just all blows up. So if you constantly want to be putting out fires and constantly cleaning up messes, go ahead, crush people. But if you don't want to spend time cleaning up messes and you want to spend time actually building a business, respect your employees, respect their needs, understand your business enough of how to use the employees that you have to create profits and growth. Because if you're using your employees properly, they're going to be engaging with your consumer better than a miserable person. There's nothing worse than a miserable employee expressing to a customer how much it sucks to work for you. Because not only do you lose employees, you lose customers, now you have no profits and your business just implodes. So you can be the catalyst for growth or you can be the implosion point for your business depending upon how you look at it. So that's my deal. Again, I apologize for the poor lighting. I don't even know what this sound is like today. So. Uh, Tomorrow, hopefully I'll have my camera back. I won't forget it somewhere. And uh, we'll get back to a higher quality of Daily V. But I think this information is important, so I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know how many likes, shares, whatever. Let me know if you're actually paying attention, if you agree, disagree. So thumbs up, thumbs down, let me know. All right, this is Brian, I'm out.